All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another episode of the Daniel Teachers Experience. I am extremely happy and grateful to be joined by my friend, Amir Victor. Amir, how are you, my man? Thank you, Daniel. I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. Um, thanks for having me here, and I'm very excited as well. Fantastic. So, my friends, for those who are not aware, Amir gives amazing productivity tips, helps transform your life, anything that you would need on a daily basis. You can find that on his podcast, The Concept Podcast, which you can find on Spotify and many others. You can also find him on YouTube and also on TikTok with a following of over 150,000 people. I know we're like, oh, followers isn't everything, but dude, you have to be doing something right. That's a freaking ton of followers. So, uh, right? Yeah. Kind of get the same feeling. Absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm grateful that I'm able to uh, reach a lot of people and be able to help and give back. Yeah. Awesome. 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 And for anyone who's watching this visually, not to worry, folks, we are going to improve and update the camera. This is just a learning experience. So <laughs> thank you for sticking with us. So Amir, my man, for all the people listening or watching, I have to start. So what are, what are some of the other things that you do? So I know I mentioned briefly the podcast and the TikTok and YouTube, but do you mind breaking down those exactly and like specifically like the kind of uh, value that you give people? So uh, generally um, I'm, I'm focusing on, on self-help and self-improvement in general. Um, so I, I try not to just frame myself in, in one domain, kind of if, if it's just productivity tips or um, just uh, mindfulness, being aware of your thoughts or just psychologically understanding yourself, being more aware of your thoughts and, and beliefs and um, all of that. So I just, in the, the umbrella of self-improvement is a huge, it's big. So what I try to do is um, just provide as much value um, and Based on what I saw in the self-help realm, I, I know that there, are, there is plenty of, of room for improvement. And I know that many people, they just, there are plenty of gurus out there and they provide very massive content and, and massive value. Um, and I just want to add in um, my kind of value in, in giving in examples, giving in step-by-steps, giving in processes, you know, just something that I can work off of and not just theoretical and not be able to do something day by day. Of course, I'm, I'm not able to do that every time because sometimes you need to know and have the theory behind and the concept <laughs> behind anything that you do um, and then being able to apply it. Because if, if you... If you have the how-to, but you don't know the, the, the concept behind it or the, where you should be coming from or what mindset or mentality you should be going uh, or applying this with, it's not going to be of much value or you're not going to see much results. So that's mainly it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the practical aspect. And I agree. Sometimes I can push too far away from theory. You know, I'm super, well, what, what works right now? But I do understand the importance of knowing the, the foundation, right? Knowing where it comes from. And then when you use the tools, it you know, works more effectively, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, Amir, my man, I have to ask, how did you get started on, on this journey of self-development? You know, not only for yourself, but then putting it out there for, for the people. Yes. Um, well, I started off... Um, from the very beginning, I was, even as, as a teenager, I was always into psychology. Um, I first started off, now I'm bringing back old memories, but started off with um, body language. I know I was very interested in that at the beginning. That's what hooked me. Um, and then um, started learning more about psychology. Um, I attended a couple of courses um, online, um, uh, psychology courses, psychology 101, read a lot about Skinner and, and mm -hmm. all the, the main, you know, the foundation of psychology. And then I started um, more into the self-help realm. I was working um, in a nine to five. I was working at, at a very uh, reputable uh, 500, uh, Fortune 500 company. I was wow. in a very good job. Um, and I just wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't um, happy with what I'm doing. I felt that I was just going through the motion. I always had that feeling that something's, there is some more of that. Um, and I just, 
I, I guess self-help was that thing for me. I just wanted to understand more about myself, wanted to understand more about people, psychology, being interested in that. So first it was just an interest, kind of like a passion. I was reading and just acquiring knowledge, getting all the knowledge that I get, and I was happy about it. But then I reached a certain point where I just felt that I was able to help. I mean, I was able to help some of my friends. I was able to help some of my family members. And I found that, hey, look, well, there must be something that I'm doing that is working, or at least I'm, I am able to help. Um, and for me, it was I was getting excited being able to apply the things and, and not just apply it, but also give it to other people um, that I was able to help. And it, you just get hooked when, when you start being or when you start seeing that you can actually provide value and you can help people out by just doing something that you love and something that you know, something that you would be reading about or just researching or just educating yourself um, about without anything. It's not like work. So it definitely started there and I got hooked. It's a bug. I mean, you, once you're, you're able, and I'm, and I'm sure that you, you feel the same way. Once you see that aha moment in someone else or you just, uh, you feel that you've been able to help them and at any level, it's just, uh, it's very fulfilling. Definitely, so my friend, definitely. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, I mean, my friend, to tell me, uh, I, I just, I really want to dig into this, man. What, mm -hmm. was it hard for you stepping away from that job? Because I can imagine, you know, if it's a prestigious company and the money's good, was there any part that said, you know what, man, well, what is this dream I want to achieve, this fulfillment, man, the money's good. Isn't it just easier to stay? Like, yeah. did you have any of those thoughts? I stayed a lot and, and I still do some work related to my previous um, uh, job, but initially it was extremely hard. And it was just, I've, I've went through the, the, the phase where I was just not able to share what I'm doing. I was just still doing at the nine to five and I was neglecting um, what I love or neglecting my passion. So, um, of course, there was... Um, I've, I've remember back where I was reading about how to get out of the nine to five and trying all, I, I tried drop shipping and I tried oh, stocks and oh. I tried all that. So I've been through that journey of getting your business online, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, and just learning about that. Um, it, it wasn't, some of them, they did work. Some of them didn't. Um, but for me, I just felt that I was chasing money so that I'm able to do the thing that I love. And then I, I shifted, the more I, I dug deep into that, the more I just started understanding the fact that there is no better thing you can do than doing something that you love or chasing your passion or not chase. I don't like the word chase anymore. Mm, interesting. Uh, Why is that? You know, chase or just uh, chasing your passion. Uh, let's say, let's say, yeah, just chasing your passion. Well, why don't you like that term? Whenever you're chasing something, there's, you're sending a message deep down to your subconscious that you're, you're not, you're not worthy of that thing you're chasing because you're chasing. So if I'm, Interesting. for example, if you're Daniel, mm -hmm. right? Are you chasing to prove that you're Daniel? Are you yeah. chasing to prove that? you are who you are, what age you are, or that mm. your friends love you. No, you don't, you just, you know that it's true and, and just live it, you do it. Um, so whenever, that's at least my philosophy, if you would say. Um, so that's just it, don't, don't try and chase things. Same thing when you chase people. You think whenever you're chasing someone, you're not really sending out the, the message that you're actually worthy of them. If you're mm -hmm. worthy of them, you, you wouldn't be chasing. You would be there. You would be providing whatever, whether it's a service or if, if you're chasing someone for a relationship, you wouldn't, if you wanted to be a, a mutual relationship with, with just the same um, level of, of effort being done with both relationships or just whatever, you, you wouldn't chase. You would just be, we are, and uh, there's nothing more fulfilling than that. So that's why I start wow. trying to chase things. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that, my friend. That, that's very interesting. Yeah. I've never thought about it like that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Now, my friend, I mean, what would you say to people who say, um, 
like like I wouldn't really talk about because I, I feel like you, you hear it so much. Oh, he just I know like you didn't like quit, you know, in a sense. But what if you say, oh, he just started chasing his dream, or and then what they mean is you know he just pursued his passion, right? Yeah. He went after what he wanted to do. He followed his goals. What kind of confidence or determination or or motivation does it take in order to what's the word? I almost want to say to convince yourself that you can do it, to convince yourself that, you know what, I am enough. I am smart enough. Like, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And I know that I myself, I was asking this question. I mean, what does it really take to, to take the leap of faith? Because um, it's, it's mentally draining sometimes and it's emotionally draining as well trying to you know what you want if if you're lucky enough to know what you want then that's great but just leaving the nine to five first off it i think what helped me is realizing that i had many limiting beliefs telling me that for example being an introvert uh, be not being able to speak in front of a camera, not being able to just be out there. It was very private. And I had the limiting beliefs that I couldn't do it. And now thinking with you, um, what made me do it actually, what made me just get myself out there. I think it's, it's a mixture of what just frustration and a mixture of, well, what else other than frustration? Frustration and belief that, you know what? You're just going to do it either ways. What, what's what's going to happen? What's the worst that could happen? Um, that's, that's how I see some of my clients um, break through. And some others, they break through by just, or, and me, myself, I think I, I broke through by wo being willing to try out and not being afraid to fail. I think the shift in my mind, what happened is when I started seeing it as, you know what, I've been delaying this for a long time and I haven't even tried. And it's exactly the same as failure. So when you don't try something, see it as exact, it's the exact same thing as you're failing because you're not oh. trying. So you're getting the same result. Like asking girls out, if you're going to, ask her and get rejected good but if you're not going to ask her it's the same thing as if you got rejected you're getting the same result so might as well go ahead and ask and she might say yes you know it's just very basic i know there's plenty of emotions plenty of of other frustrations and and risks that has to do with it i know that some of us including me might say that i need the um, the illusion of safety that the nine to five provides, uh, which I believe with the COVID-19 and what happened, there is no safety. There is no, it's just illusion. That's what I figured out, but it took me a while to figure out. And the second thing that I could tell you and, and L, anyone who's listening that might help you is start, start being around people who are outside the nine to five. Don't just, because if you're in the nine to five and you have a family that always been in corporate, or always been having corporate jobs and all of this, just get outside of that because that's all you can see. If all your, your surroundings are, and, and all your the people you know do nothing but work nine to five, it's very hard for you to get out of it. But if you've been out with, I don't know, five, six, seven entrepreneurs who are working any time of day, just being digital nomads and, and not, not caring about the nine to five, you would start rubbing off of it. So just get you outside of your comfort zone. And what usually limits us from doing that is whenever we're outside of our comfort zone or whatever, we're going to be surrounded by people who are not like us. We feel, we feel that we're outside of our comfort zone. We feel uncomfortable. We feel that we're being challenged. We feel that maybe we're not up to it. Maybe we're, we're not, I don't know worthy of it maybe you're not good enough so you start having self-doubts um or you can that's why you actually try and avoid being uh, around people that are different from you but actually going and being out there um, with them they would actually make you better and that's the the main 
theory of self-improvement is to get yourself out of, com of out of your comfort zone each and every day so that you become more and you do more yeah. i love that mindset amir i could not agree more <laughs> yeah. because what, what, what you're saying it's both simultaneously simple and complex right because the simple part is like dude you know if you who's the, who said that quote right you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take right or it's yeah. like, you know, I would rather attempt and fail than not attempt at all. Like, it, it's very straightforward. At least this way you have your answer. Now, it's also complex because there's emotions, right? There's self-judgment. There's, you know, what if she rejects me or whatever? How will that make me feel? Yeah. So I think, I think that was a really, really good way and concise way to, to break down that idea. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Right. Great. <laughs> Great. So what were you going to say, Amir? I feel like I just jumped the gun on you. No, absolutely not. I, I was just going to say that you're absolutely right. And thinking about what you just said and um, if, if we're going to still remain with the example of um, asking that girl out or you don't ask her out because of the emotions that you yep. have the one thing that i always say to anyone trying to do something is to practice with very small steps um, just try out don't don't go and ask her out just go and and just say hi and run but just get, you know, get outside of your comfort yeah, zone. For yeah, just for sure. Admit it. Step by step, very small, very small steps every day is extremely powerful. Think about if you did that for, for a month. After a month, you would be able to go and ask her out. But mm -hmm, we, just, mm -hmm. we, we just don't push ourselves every day to be able to just, you know, do something uncomfortable. And it, because it is uncomfortable, we just got to get used to that. Um, get used to being uncomfortable. Get used to just talking to strangers. Get used to just go and ask for discounts. Go and, and do something that you're, go and scream and, well, not scream at <laughs> anyone, but just in, in the subway or just while there's no one, maybe you can just go and do it and try and try and try. And the more you do that, the more you develop the habit of being outside of your comfort zone, you'd be amazed of all the things you'd be able to do. Because I know that this was one of my frustrations. I mean, yeah, they tell me go and 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 talk to a girl, but I don't know how to. I I don't I don't have the guts to do it. Well, you're not gonna have the guts to do it. It's just like, and I give that example a lot of time. It's just like riding a bike. You don't. If I give you all the theory of how you can go and ride a bike, you will still not be able to ride a bike until you start taking the bike and start practicing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you will mm -hmm. fall one two three four five times but afterwards you will be able to do it but if you well, riding a bike first you got to see other people riding a bike so that you have the belief that hey if they can do it i can do it as well so surround yourself with others that are doing it and at the same time know that you will fail know that you will fall try it again do it anyways and eventually you will be able to do it it's very simple I know it's a management of your emotion, but you got to do it because it's so much worth it. It's better than just staying in your comfort zone and just thinking back and saying, I wish I could, I wish I have, I wish I did. Yeah. That's Friends, it. for anyone listening, that was absolute gold. Sure. If you really listen to what Amir just said, I seriously mean it. Grab, pour yourself a cup of coffee or a tea, lie back, close your eyes and listen to, to those last few minutes of what, actually listen to the whole thing because this is all gold, but <laughs> especially those last few minutes, man, because people, you know, it, it's such a common occurrence, right? Whether it's again, asking out a girl, riding a bike, going for a job interview, people always think about, well, you know, I'm uncomfortable. And then you start thinking, well, you know, why don't people like getting uncomfortable? And, and Amir, you know, we said it perfectly, right? So what if I get rejected? What if it doesn't work out? What if it hurts? But like Amir so perfectly put it, you not doing anything is, is already you failing. And if you have the mindset of, okay, like, listen, it's not about why do I get uncomfortable? It's let's say, why does Amir not get uncomfortable? That's the real question. And literally he just said, guys, expect to fail. Welcome it. Take it in. Don't, don't, uh, yeah. what's the word? Don't let it take you down. Don't let it make you stronger. Expect people to say no. Expect to get rejected. Look around, you know, surround yourself, people. Take the theory, but also you have to practice. Be open to falling so you can value getting back up. And I think if people really, truly are, are listening to this and, and they heard what you said, Amir, it can, I think, drastically, I, I don't want to make a huge claim, like improve the quality of your life, but it will really save you so much stress, so much anxiety. Yeah. So much worrying. So Amir, I think you nailed it on the freaking head now. I think you totally awesome. nailed it. Awesome. I love it. Appreciate that. Thank you. And I actually want you, if, if, if you can elaborate more on, on, on what you just said of 
ask why, not just why am I not able to do it, but why is he able to do it? I think that's key. And I love that when you, when you said that in, in, in one of your episodes as well, is asking, we usually, we just focus on what we don't want or what we cannot do instead of, okay, how can I go and do it? How, why is that person doing it? How is he feeling? So can you elaborate on that more? I love it. I, and I want everyone to hear it again, even if, if, if your listeners listen to it again. I know that <laughs> I myself, I want to listen to it again. Thank you, Amit. I mean, it's just really just piggybacking off of what you said. And this originally, guys, this isn't my idea. This was an idea that I heard from a clinical psychologist by the name of Dr. Jordan Peterson. He has his book out, 12 Rules for Life. It's a good one. I'm reading it right now. Um, no, that was not a sponsorship. But so, so basically his you know, take on it was, and this is really going into the world of positive psychology. You know, you're not looking at the person who, like for example, if me and Amir are about to go you know, do a public speaking thing, we're about to go speak in front of people. I feel very anxious. Amir doesn't feel anxious. People asking Daniel, why do you feel anxious? That's not the most amazing question. And the reason is because you know, we, can, we can use our common sense. Again, chance of rejection, chance of failure, right? You can mess up with if there's someone you're trying to impress. The real question is, Amir, why are you anxious? What are you doing differently? So positive psychology was like, instead of looking at how to move from misery to you know, good, how can we move from good to great? Or how can we look at someone who's already doing great? How can we learn from them? Come up, hey, Amir, why don't you get anxious? And you go, well, um, Daniel, I know that uh, failing is just another way to learn in life. I know that I've done this a bunch of times. I know that I've practiced enough. And I think, my friends, we can learn so much when we look at people who are already doing it. And, and this is one of those things where sometimes it's, I, I know I put a big emphasis on the tools that they're using, you know, like the practicality. But a lot of it, my friends, is mindset, right? A lot of it isn't because Amir just has, you know, the sexiest camera in the world or, you know, he has a script all lined up. It's just in his mind, he doesn't fear failing. And I really think that's what it is. I think there's a misconception. Sorry to, I don't want to digress too much, but there's this misconception that confidence is you think you're going to come out on top every time, which I would argue confidence doesn't mean you're going to win every time. It just means you're not afraid to lose. And because of that, you will always attempt. And guess what? The guy who you think is the coolest, most popular guy who gets all the girls, if, if he's asked out 50 girls, I guarantee you 40 of them have said no. But he had to go and just do it over and over and over again until you get yeses. Again, I know we keep going back to those examples, but take it with job opportunities. Take it with, you know, me wanting to network with people on, on Instagram, you know, or whatnot. You just DM a bunch of people. Naturally, you know, if I DM Drake, come on my podcast, he might not get back to me. And that's okay because he's not the only one I'm DMing, right? It's a numbers game, my friend. So, yeah, totally. So, totally, man. It's exactly how you think it is, my friend. Look at, you know, who is doing the things that you want to do, right? Why aren't they anxious? Why aren't they afraid? Why aren't they worried? And how can we incorporate that ourselves? Love it. Absolutely. And the fact that just on the numbers game, that's one-on-one what they teach in, in sales uh, courses as well. If, if you're into a sales job, they would tell you it, you're collecting the notes. It's, it's a numbers game. If, if you get, it's a percentage as well. If your conversion rate is 10%, that means that you need to ask 100 people to get one sale. So what, what do you want or what can you do if you want to get 10 sales or 100 sales? You gotta ask a thousand or a hundred thousand. That's that's a numbers game. So if you're just that means you're gonna be rejected ninety thousand times. And mm -hmm. when you shift the meaning of it as it it's it's a numbers game, and you gotta call ten thousand so that you would get a hundred. That's that's all what it takes. You just shift the meaning instead of I'm getting rejected in each call. You start saying, Hey, that's the ninetieth call. I still got got. I don't know how many left. So that's it's I absolutely love it. It's a, it's a it's a concept and a, and a a strategy that you can apply to anything, um, in in anything that you want to do. So, yeah. Definitely, my friend. Now, Amir, what do you think about um, getting rejected at an early age, or just kind of getting used to the idea of failing? Because I would imagine, you know, if someone has never failed before, if you always get participation, you know, medals, and everybody says you're great, and you always get the job opportunity, all of a sudden, you know, let's say you're 30, and you, you finally fail at something, or you get rejected at something, would you think of me that that would be a whole lot more damaging to that person, as opposed to someone who does fail every once in a while, and he's, it's, it's nothing new to them? There is, uh, to me, I think there is two sides of, of 
well, more than two sides, but there is two perspective at least. Let me give you two mm-hmm. perspective that I have. Please. If you're failing from the very beginning at an early stage, it might you might adopt the the mentality that it's okay to fail, uh, it's normal to fail, that's fine, I'm good, nothing's wrong. Or if you're really a kid or you're just young and you don't know how to deal with rejection, you don't know how to deal with failure, it might have a reversed um, mm. consequence on you that you might be you know, just too scared to fail. It might traumatize you in a way and you just you, you, you decide that you're never going to do that. So it, it has to, every side has, has two, two ways or just extremes. And the way you can ensure that you're not going to get traumatized is by having support, by being... Um, I think, again, being surrounded by people who are taking failure the way you want to take it, which is take it as a, a stepping stone, take it as something that you learn from. Um, so that's one thing. But going back to your original question, um, I think failing from the beginning is better. It's easier because if you take it from the perspective that it's just a stepping stone and you're not going to be afraid to do it, um, and it's not going to traumatize you, then that's great. The more you, the, the younger you do it, the, the earlier you do it, the, the better it is. Um, and yes, I, I think I myself, I was in the second uh, category where I wasn't failing as much when I was a kid. Well, I was failing maybe at school sometimes, <laughs> but I wasn't failing as much. And it was hard for me to admit that I'm not good at something. Or mm. to just not perfect something from the very beginning and just having self-doubt when you're older, it, it makes it a bit harder for you to just push, uh, push through. And I think I was, I was lucky that I just kept on doing it, even just regardless of, of failing or realizing that I'm just human, you know, not perfect. No one is just realizing that you need to just push through and, and not get demotivated by the fact that you're human because you are and you're just going to push forward and know that you have your strength, you have your weaknesses, focus on your strength, make it better and your weaknesses, don't try and hide them. Mainly, I either admit them, accept them or do something about them. And yeah, I think these are the stepping stone I think or just uh, the pillars that I used in order to achieve or get outside of my comfort zone and achieve more I love your self-awareness Amir I love how because it's not an easy thing to say you know these are my strengths but also these are my flaws these are things I'm not good at these are things I wish to improve on and I think if someone has to really I mean check their ego and you know in order to say you know what I'm not the perfect human being right I do have these things that I can improve that could serve me better in the future that's actually something I've been thinking about recently you know I, I remember when i was younger i used to think like wow i'm an amazing person like anyone would be lucky to be my friend or hang out with me and the older i got i started to say oh yeah that, I, I do do that that's kind of annoying oh man i do that and then eventually you're like wow like there's a lot of things that can be improved I, I don't know if you've heard the saying you know um if it's not broken don't fix it but then i heard another quote that said well why shouldn't we improve it Right? Like an iPhone update or something. Like why, why can't we keep improving it and modifying it and adapting it? And I, I was just thinking to myself, like, wow, like the best way to move forward is, and I would love to, to hear your two cents on this, you know, where you can identify these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses, and then you can start to work on those weaknesses as opposed to just blindly imagining, oh, I, I'm just amazing. I'm amazing everywhere. I don't, have, I don't have a temper problem. I don't have a patience problem. I'm just, so what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, first of all, um, not knowing your weaknesses is making you fragile, oh, making you making. So for example, if you think Daniel, you think you're, you're perfect. And I, I saw, and I sensed that you have a, you have a, a, a patience problem. Mm-hmm. If I went ahead and told you, Hey, you're, you don't have patience at all, or you have a temper problem. What would I do? I would immediately get to you. And I would immediately be able to get into a weakness that you don't want to admit or you're denying. Or what you can say is that you would get angry and you just, because you're trying to just reject what I'm saying and because uh, subconsciously you know that it's true. So the more you're aware of your weaknesses, the, 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 
anti-fragile uh, you get. I mean, if you haven't read the book, anti-fragile, mm -hmm. definitely recommend it. Um, so that's one thing. So know your weaknesses, not to put yourself down. Because I know that some of us, depending on your childhood and upbringing and all of this, you might be into the habit of putting yourself down or self-sabotaging, self-guilt, shame, all of this. This is not helping you at all. This is not giving you any benefit. This is just detrimental to your mental health, to your self-esteem, to your confidence, and to actually go in and apply other things. So just know your weaknesses, but don't dwell on it and don't, don't put yourself down. The second thing that I, I think um, you said, why not improve them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I used to make the mistake of trying to improve everything, trying mm -hmm. to improve all my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And I realized at, at a certain point that that's, that's a way to go. But if you are trying to improve everything, you're not going to see huge result in one thing. So if, for example, you want to eat right, you want to have perfect relationships, you want to be an amazing father and you want to be an amazing coach and you want to be an amazing athlete and you want to be an amazing, all of that. Great. You will be good at some of these, but you will not be exceptional or you will not be just a leader at any of these. So what I realized is, or at least that's the strategy that I, that I found is, is much more beneficial to me and to reach my goals faster is to focus on, focus on my, my strength, make them better, and also focus on at least one weakness. One thing, the number one thing that I want to improve right now, how much am I going to give it? Am I going to give it a, a month, two months, three months to, to make it better? Focus on that, make it better, and then just see if I'm happy with the results, mm -hmm. good. Then I just move on to the next weakness, to the next second most important weakness that I want to improve and just go on from there. I thought, I think that based on that, when I started implementing this, it, I started seeing much more results than when I was trying to improve everything at the same time. Yeah. That's a good take on it, Amir, because I think um, it can definitely be very overwhelming. Like I can see someone wanting to improve their diet and they're, you know, uh, work out more and sleep better and have more relationships. And sometimes it can be hard to juggle all those and you don't know which one to focus on. So I think that's, I think that's a very practical approach in the sense of, you know, what is the number one thing? Like what is the most urgent thing? Focus on that, get to a decent level before you start moving on to, to other things. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. 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 Hey, Amir, my man, I've had an amazing time listening to you and having this conversation with you. What is one last piece of advice? that you will so graciously leave me with and leave the listeners with? Based on all what we said, yes, just sir. get outside of your comfort zone. Don't settle for a mediocre life or don't settle for mediocre results. Just get outside of your comfort zone. And I guarantee you, whoever you're watching, listening, if you get outside of your comfort zone, you will not regret it. And you will look back at who you were a month back or two months back or two years back, you will look back and be proud of yourself, even if you haven't achieved anything. But the fact that you've got outside of your comfort zone, you're building a, an invaluable habit that is going to serve you your entire life. I think that's the one thing that I would leave everyone with today. Love it, Amir. Absolutely love it. Amir, my man, for the people who have fallen in love with you while listening to this podcast, watching this YouTube video, where can they find you, my friend? What are your social media handles? Absolutely. So the Breakthrough Power, uh, Breakthrough Power on YouTube, uh, TikTok, uh, Instagram, um, and the Concept Podcast on YouTube and all the uh, podcast uh, platforms as well. You will find me there, the Concept Podcast, Amir Victor, and you will be able to find me. Awesome. Amir, it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Absolutely, Daniel. Always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I'll definitely, definitely talk to you soon. I'm counting on it, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Daniel Teachers Experience. This has been Daniel and Amir wishing you goodbye and stay safe. Awesome. Good luck.